Hello, welcome to our next presentation on the cytoskeleton, proteins and prokaryotes in no particular order. So here's our section or selection from the specification. Um, we're going to look at the interrelationship between organelles in the production and secretion of proteins, the importance of the cytoskeleton and its functions, and what the similarities and differences are between structure and ultrastructure of prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Remembering that ultrastructure is the electron microscope appearance. So let's begin with the cytoskeleton. Now the cytoskeleton is a network of protein fibers and tubules. Now uh, it's shown here. So a tubule or a microtubule is hollow as it's like a pipe. Yeah, it has a lumen that just can move through. Whereas filaments or fibers are solid. They do not have a hole or a lumen down the middle. But both of these uh, do things that you would expect as a skeleton. It gives the shape, support and structure. And it also is about movement. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. What kind of electron, uh, what kind of electron microscope, what kind of image is this? It's not an electron microscope image. Which microscope's been used? Hopefully you're shouting out laser scanning confocal microscope, Mr. Johnson. Uh, it's the brightly colored fluorescent image that tells you it's one of those. And here are some examples of the uh, fibres again. Uh, you've got the microtubule uh, made of tubulin, so tubules made from tubulin, and other filaments, either actin or the intermediate filaments. Notice the size. This time we are looking at nanometers. How many nanometers are in a micrometer? Again, hopefully you're shouting 1,000, Mr. Joinson. And you would be right if you said that. So think about how you would convert nanometers into micrometers and, micro and into millimeters. To convert nanometers to micrometers, you divide by a thousand. And again, you would divide by a thousand times a thousand to convert them into millimeters. And you divide by a million. So these are really tiny things. Now yeah, we're beginning to approach the limit of what we can clearly see with an electron microscope as we go further down to the actin filaments. And one of the principal things about the cytoskeleton is it provides a framework which gets, supports the cell, but also it allows movement of substances around. So these proteins, dianin and kinesin, um, they move organelles around the cell. So for example, um, in a plant cell that's rapidly photosynthesizing, a palisade cell, it moves the chloroplasts up to nearer to the light so that they can carry out photosynthesis. Um, it moves vesicles through the cell so that they can fuse with the cell membrane. You know, that's the purpose of these things. They provide tracks. So something's going to be moved into or uh, out of the cell. It can also, for some types of cell, allow the whole cell itself to move. Yeah, it allows some uh, single-celled organisms, for example, to move about. And they also provide the framework along which um, chromosomes move from one part of the cell to another in the process of cell division. We'll be looking about more about that later in the unit when we come to uh, our work on mitosis and meiosis. Uh, intermediate filaments, uh, they help to anchor the nucleus, they keep it firmly in place, uh, and they also sometimes go between cells. So in other words, they go from cell, cell to cell, helps to stick one cell to the other, um, it helps to allow information to be passed from one cell to another, so that uh, it's providing a communication between cells. Now, microtubules and uh, microfilaments uh, also provide the structure for flagella and cilia, which I've hopefully heard about in previous presentations. Um, they principally uh, have a similar structure. Uh, and when you look at cilia and microtubules, they're, they're cilia and undulipodia, or flagella as they're sometimes called, uh, you can see they've got what we call a nine plus two structure. So there's the two in the center, one, two, then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sets around the outside in pairs of tubulins. So nine pairs around the outside plus two single ones on the inside is the nine plus two structure. Now, undulipodia are longer. A sperm tail is an undulipodium to allow it to swim from side to side. 
Uh, and oop, let's just skip back a second. Uh, sorry. Uh, they are much longer, cilia, much shorter, found, for example, in the trachea, wafting substances from one place to another. Uh, they're also found in the fallopian tubes for moving eggs. Uh, so a couple of examples of where cilia might be found. Let's move on to pr proteins and how pr these organelles interact. Now, here we've got our nucleus, uh, and within the nucleus we've got the nucleolus. So uh, the nucleolus is where ribosomes are made. The nucleus, the whole nucleus itself, is where messenger RNA or mRNA is found. Now this is going to be a fairly brief canter through making proteins. And for some of you, you should already be familiar with this from your work at GCSE. Um, it does depend on the exam board as to how much of this detail you've gone into. But we're coming back to this in more detail again when we look at DNA. So if this is a bit uh, brief at the moment, we'll be coming back to this in more detail. The messenger RNA copies uh, uh, provides information as a copy for a set of instructions. Uh, and the instructions are then copied from the DNA by the messenger RNA and go out through the nuclear pore to the ribosomes on the endoplasmic reticulum. We have rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is studded with ribosomes. The ribosomes then read the instructions and make the protein. So the protein is made into the um, endoplasmic reticulum. It then, uh, because remember, this is all made of membrane, it's membranous, membrane-bound material. It's pinched off in a sort of a little um, capsule called a vesicle, and this vesicle moves and fuses with the Golgi apparatus. Remember, if you see Golgi body or Golgi complex, that's the same thing. The vesicle fuses and then uh, supplies the um, protein into the Golgi. The Golgi then packages it, often it can add substances to it, make it glycoprotein, for example, uh, and makes it ready for uh, release out uh, into from out of the cell. Uh, the vesicles can then pinch off again because, it, again, it's a membrane-bound material. pinches off, it moves to the cell surface membrane, and at the cell surface membrane, it fuses, and then this substance is released. Uh, and we'll be looking again at these movement processes in more detail as well when we talk about membrane structure. So all of these things interconnect, and that's one of the things you should be getting from biology as we go through sort of this year and next. The idea is that these things are not in isolation, they do all feed into each other. So let's just recap. Messenger RNA is made from a DNA template. The messenger RNA moves out of it there, goes uh, the nuclear pore, goes into the endoplasmic reticulum. From there, it's moved into the endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi apparatus. From the Golgi apparatus, it then fuses with the cell surface membrane. Let's talk about insulin here. Remember, it could be any protein. So it could be asking you about a different hormone than insulin. Insulin is the classic example of one, but there's lots of other things that could be made. But remember, you think about things that are made of protein. So don't get thrown if it says, suggest the mechanism for a protein that you've never heard of. It'll tell you it's a protein, or you should know it's a protein. It should be a commonly heard protein, and therefore you should know what's going on. Uh, let's finish up with prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Here is our prokaryote. You know prokaryotes better as bacteria, uh, a single cell organism. Um, here is between one and five micrometers long. Remember how many millimeters are, uh, is that? Or how, what fraction of a millimeter is that? Yeah, so we need to think about that. So it is a thousandth of a millimeter, so we're dividing by a thousand to convert it into millimeters. And they've got flagella this time because it is a prokaryote. Uh, and this thing, the nucleoid, well, there's no nuclear membrane around there, and that's one of the key features about prokaryotes, that it doesn't have membrane-bound organelles. So it has a membrane cell wall, but the other features are it's not got an endoplasmic reticulum, it's not got Golgi apparatus, it's just got this nuclear sort of loop, uh, but it's not contained within anything. And then some other features uh, are common, obviously, is this slimy layer, because it's called slime capsule, pilus or pili in the plural, that can uh, be used to help to move around. Let's look at a summary of its key differences. Um, Prokaryotes are our bacteria, eukaryotes, true nucleated or, or, organisms. So 
uh, plants, animals, bacteria, uh, not bacteria, plants, animals, and fungi are eukaryotes, prokaryotes, there are bacteria. Uh, much smaller in comparison to size and in comparison to eukaryotes, which are much bigger. Um, again, we've already talked about the uh, whether there is a membrane bound nucleus or not. Um, it's a single loop of DNA, whereas this is uh, a double a helix. Uh, and the nucleus has a membrane with nuclear pores and has proteins. Uh, cell walls are peptidoglycan cell walls, but not peptidoglycan, and only in plants and fungi anyway. Remember, animals won't have cell walls. Smaller versus larger ribosomes. A key difference, nothing else to take away, is no membrane-bound organelles versus membrane-bound organelles. That's the classic difference that I will be first quoting as a difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Uh, where the ATP, the energy or currency, is made is in mitochondria and eukaryotes. Again, membrane-bound organelle. Whereas it's not in pro, uh, the prokaryotes because it doesn't have membrane and organelles, so it doesn't have mitochondria. Uh, and prokaryotes may have uh, flagella, which is different from an undulopodia. Okay, um, so uh, other features uh, the cytoskeleton is less well developed. There is no feature called a centriole. Centrioles are used in um, cell division in animal cells. Um, there are additional loops of DNA called a plasmid. We'll meet those again when we come back to do um, biotechnology. Uh, the pili, we mentioned before, they allow the um, organisms to stick to each other and it also allows communication between one bacterial cell and another. It allows them to pass plasmids, uh, DNA information, between one bacteria to the other. And that's how um, bacteria can pass information, for example, about bacterial resistance to one another. Um, so, how do uh, prokaryotes divide? They take have binary fission. In other words, fission is splitting. Binary is into two, so they split into two. But it can't be called mitosis because they don't have a uh, nucleus, and mitosis is how split dividing of a nucleus. But principally, it's the same process. The chromosome needs to duplicate itself, so the DNA duplicates itself. Uh, and then the, it splits into either end of the uh, organism, and then you end up with two identical daughter cells. But um, we'll talk about mitosis in more detail another time, but principally the process is fairly similar. It's just the fact that it's called binary fission and it doesn't have a nuclear membrane around the outside. And, oh, yes. Uh, for fun, uh, you can have a go at watching the cellular song. Um, I'm not going to play this to you now, but uh, trust me, when you hear it, you'll love it. Okay, thanks for listening.